Hello everyone, and welcome to January's Patreon tutorial. I uh, apologize for the delay, been busy with client work and getting my house ready to sell and whatnot, but um, yeah, so today we're going to walk you through, or I'm going to walk you through, um, how to build out the intro light sphere to the latest Razer Blade 16 ad. Um, we did this uh, over the last couple months, and just thought it was pretty cool and figured I'd show you guys how to do it. Um, relatively simple. There's some few, a few little techniques here and there um, to get it looking correct and working fast. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so what we want to do first is just create a simple like fluorescent light. Um, so we're going to do that just with some three simple cylinders real quick. So let's make this a little bit smaller. And these can be just kind of general shape. They don't have to be exact you can always go get your own like fluorescent tube models or whatever you want and use them and do the same thing the same way um let's make these end caps real quick make them a little bit bigger that maybe add a little bit of fillet on there just so they're not quite as harsh edged there we go and then you're just gonna copy this down to here you make these a little bit Thinner. There we go. Bring that in a little bit too. There we go. Cool. So that's our that's our fluorescent light. <clears throat> so this will be scattered across the object that we will be building here now. So let's put this into our scene. Um, we'll organize that later. We'll just hide that for now. Um, so what we're going to do is grab a platonic or I mean, you can grab literally any shape you want. Um, I'm just recreating the one from the ad. So we're going to go with that. Um, so we're going to go grab a platonic and set the type to Bucky, which is a very odd shape. And you have all these weird lines. Um, just keep the default size and segments at one. And so what we're going to do is take all these little um, these extra lines out of here that we don't need. So I'm going to press C to convert that to editable and then just real quick go through and delete all these lines crossing the center of each one of these sections just make sure you grab all of them double check you grabbed all of them or else you'll run into some issues when you're trying to scatter these lights grab that, that. Oh, not that one i think that's it oh nope two more on the top Okay, so once you have that, just right click on that and go to dissolve so that we get rid of those. So you should have no lines and just clean polygons. Perfect. And then the trick to this is getting it to line up and look straight on. So we'll go ahead and create a redshift camera. And then we're going to zero this out. ID zero, zero, zero. That way we're just looking directly at it. And then, so what you want to do is hit R for rotate and then find the area that looks the best. So we're going to, let's see. Cool, we'll go with something like this. This is a weird shape to try and get even. Um, so you just kind of have to play with it and get it to look as good as you can. So there's that. That's our base shape. And so we'll be working off of this with everything. So first thing we want to do is create the cage, basically, that will go around this. We're not seeing the actual platonic. We just want to see the cage as geometry. So what we can do for that is keep your or have your uh, platonic selected and go to edge mode, control A or command A to select all these. Right click and go edge to spline and that will split out all of the uh, the edges into splines and so what we can do to easily create the geometry for that is go to volume builder volume measure and drag builder underneath that and platonic spline underneath that so you'll get this crazy looking shape and we'll just drop this down to like i don't know one and then you'll see if you do that you'll have all these little um balls which we don't want and it's just massive so in the volume builder 
I'm going to go down to the platonic spline, click on that, and you'll see radius and density. So to get rid of all these little individual balls, just set the density to 1, and I'll make it completely smooth. And then if you hold down Alt, you can just drag this down and get it to the thickness that you want. We're going to go pretty thin, um, just to make it look more sleek. And <clears throat> that should be good for that. And then we can go and smooth this out. If you hit this, throw the smooth on there, you'll see that it disappears. So you just need to go into here and bring up your density a little bit, or sorry, radius a little bit, and then you'll get you'll get that to come back. And let's go ahead and drop this on mean curvature, and then drop that back down. There. So that is our base cage, basically. And so you can. Go right click on that and go to connect objects and then we'll just hide the volume measure. So we'll name this uh, light cage and this will be light shape. And we'll put that in there and that in there. Okay, so we can hide the cage for now. We'll deal with that later. Um, so let's get the shape back. So we'll unhide that. So we've got our shape. And then let's go ahead and clone the fluorescent light onto here. So what we want to do is grab a go to MoGraph cloner, bring that down here, and then drag your fluorescent light into the cloner. Make sure you unhide the light. And then in the cloner, we want to go to grid, or sorry, we want to go to mode, set it to object, and then drag that light shape into your object. Now you'll have it scatter kind of everywhere. We don't want that. We want this to be on edge. So you do that, and then you'll get it one on every single edge. And obviously they're way too big right now. So you can just go and click on your fluorescent light and scale it down. Now, when you scale it, you might <clears throat> these shapes might change a little bit. Um, so you can go back in and just readjust that to get it to look how you want. Cool. So that's the base of that. We're going to go ahead and hide the shape. And now we've got our light tubes all on the edges. And if we unhide the cage, uh, we can see that it's a little bit too thick still. Um, so let's go and grab our fluorescent lights. Let's actually, we'll just go like this. We'll just scale the tube up a little bit and then we'll grab these and scale them up as well. And maybe give them a little bit more height. There we go. Cool. So we've got our cage, we've got our lights, and we've got the base shape. <clears throat> so it's really not too bad to get that set up, and you can do this with any any shape you want, and then just do that, repeat that same process, get the edge to splines and cage, and then you can basically just drop those into the cloner, and it will readjust everything to that shape. Cool, so now that we've got that, we can go ahead and move on to the actual lighting side of things. So, we are going to want to add a emission texture to our let's call this bulb and we'll just go and cap one and cap two so we're going to want to add an emission to our bulb and then this bulb will be driven by a fields object to change the color and pattern and whatnot so let's go ahead and do that real quick so we're going to go to materials standard and just apply this to the bulb. And this will go up in here. And then, so what we're gonna do is go Shift C and type in user color data. This way we can grab the color data from <clears throat> our fields, which we'll create in a second. And then this will go and plug into our emission color. And for the attribute name, we'll just go drop down MoGraph color. And then make sure we set our emission weight to, I don't know, like five or something. That all depends on what your scene looks like. And then we're going to bring our roughness up a little bit and then drop that down. OK, so that's it for that. And then for the edges or for the uh, end caps, we can just make a basic um, I don't know, black material or something just so that it uh, doesn't stand out too much. So just drop that down and bring up that. Perfect. So it's end cap black and light tube cool so we've got that so let's get some color into here <clears throat> so what we want to do is click on our cloner 
go to MoGraph, Effector, and Plane Effector. Now you see them all scatter around, that's okay. Just come to Position, Zero Parameter, Position, and turn that off. And that's all you gotta do for that part. So then from here, click on your plane, go to Fields, and add a Linear Effector, or sorry, Linear Fall Off. So you'll see nothing's happening right now, no colors changing, nothing. So click on your linear field, go to remapping, or sorry, color remap, and then where it says color, drop that to gradients. And then <clears throat> that should technically change the color of that. And let's see, not quite sure why it's not right now. Where is it? Nothing is happening. Let's see what happens in here. Ah, there it is. Okay. So for some reason, it's not showing in my viewport. Let's see. So it's not showing in my viewport, but it is working. So I'm not quite sure what is going on there. Um, interesting. Let's see. Fields, color. Remapping. Let's see, maybe if I throw a different color on there. Huh, that's odd. Anyways, <clears throat> it is working. So that is good. So you see, as we move this, those lights change color. Now, if we, with that, it's kind of meh. It doesn't really look that great. Um, everything seems pretty dull. Actually, let's real quick, let's do this black cap onto our cage and that way it doesn't stand out too much either so we've got that and let's go ahead and add redshift lights to help brighten this up and be able to use uh, environment fog and volumes and all that kind of stuff to this so it's going to be the base of the same process just grab this cloner copy this we'll call this emission tubes and then this one will be our rs light tubes so we can go in here and just delete that and go up to redshift lights and add an area light. And for this, we're going to drop this down, throw it into there, turn off UV port because that might cause it to crash. And we're going to set this to cylinder. Now these are obviously way too big. So we're just going to drop this down to like five, five and maybe 20 just to get it down to where we can actually see it. And we can actually just copy what this is, so radius is like 1.6. So we'll do 1.6 there, 1.6 there, and then our height is 27. So we'll just copy that and paste that into there. So now these are the same length. So go into your light tube, uh, cloner object, go to transform, and just rotate this 90 degrees on the pitch and they just disappeared so let's see what's going on with that perhaps we just need to make this three three oopsies 28 there we go we just need to get it to shine through just a little bit so it looks like 3.5 3.5 cool okay so when we hit render all you're going to see is white light not what we want so the trick to getting uh, the fields to affect our actual lights is just to go into your area light where it says blend object color. Just click that and you will see that these are now changing color. And you can also see that in the viewport so it makes it easier to see what's actually going on. So if we just uh, move this over real quick. Get some settings in here. Where is our settings window? I'm doing this on a smaller monitor just for the sake of aspect ratio. And we'll go here, add a little bit of bloom in there. Ooh, that's bright. And we'll just drop that down. Cool. Actually, real, real quick, turn that off. There we go. Perfect. So now we can see that better. Let's actually throw a plane in here real quick. I'll scale that up just so you can see what's happening on the ground. Perfect. So let's go 90, 0, and then 0, 0. Perfect. So now we've got that all framed up. So 
this is essentially the setup. So as you rotate this, as you rotate your field, sorry, um, everything changes. And so you can go in here into your fields, go to color remap. So all of your light color, everything is just controlled through this color remap right here. And so you can throw in like whatever presets you want. You can go like full color and you get the full color. And then obviously the scale of this affects how smooth that transition is and whatnot to get it um, looking how you want. So another trick you can do is to make it look more like LED tubes, just like instantly turning on and off. Uh, it's simple to do that. We can go and just whatever uh, gradient you have, let's one, choose one with a little bit less colors. We'll just do, oh, I don't know. Let's do rainbow two. And then so right click in your gradient and go to interpolation of all knots and set that to step. So now each tube will only be one color at a time. It won't blend between colors or anything like that. So you get kind of like this stepping effect, which kind of gives it more of a like I don't know techie look, I guess you could call it. Um, and then one thing you can also do is create black on the ends of each one of these gradients. So let's grab these two, throw black on there. And then handy little tip is when you have all of these selected and you want them to be even, right click and go distribute selected knots and it'll distribute all of those evenly. Um, so what you can do is just drag this in, make it smaller and then position this more in the center. And let's zero this out, zero, zero. Good, let's hop out of our camera real quick. So now you can see that these are shut off in the back and you get kind of like a cool, techie fading effect and it's really really fast to render like this is basically real time it's super super nice and so then what you could do is if you don't want to have to sit here and like animate it moving and you want it to loop really really easily and flawlessly you can go to your linear field and bring this up to linear field let's bring this up a little bit and go to remapping and so in here you can adjust a bunch of settings like where you want your offsets to be um, clamping and all that good stuff. But what we want to do is go down to here to contour and set your contour mode to curve. So normally what that does is it smooths out your transitions. Um, but since we have our ramp set to step, it doesn't really matter. We still get that stepping look. And then what we can do is come down and you have animation speed and spline offset. So if we set this to like 45, it's going to loop through this ramp every 45 frames. So drop that down, kind of get a better angle on this. So we can really see what's happening you hit play. So now you can see it's automatically running through that ramp and having the black on both ends makes it seamless. And so we turn that off we'll get a little faster preview in here and just makes it super super easy and then you can go in here and just change whatever colors you want so if you want like only a green color in here you can do that and you just adjust this to how you want and it does that turn that on get this nice tube looking effect and you can use this with any fall off you can throw in radio fall offs you can throw in noise fall offs to get just random noise in there which actually let's do that. Um, I prefer using the shader just because you have a little bit more control. So let's drop this into here, go to plane and drop the shader field on there. We'll turn that off. So of course nothing's happening right now. It's all just going to be white. So click on your shader field, go to gradients and in field, we need to add a shader. And so this works really well with high contrast stuff. So if you just, bring your contrast pretty much all the way up and then you can drop your brightness down. You get that. And then what you want to do is you can go into animate or movement. So if we go, so we'll just go movement one speed. We want it to go really slow. And then we hit play. That's a little bit too slow. Let's try hundred five. Not quite sure that's why that's not working. Let's try maybe adding this in there. What is happening? Oh, refresh. So if, that, if you're getting the run of that issue, click on your shader, go to field and change or check on this frame refresh. And now there we go. Now it's working. So go back to our noise and then drop that to zero and this to like 1.1. 1. 1. There we go. 
So these are really small numbers that you need in here. It doesn't take much to get to move and then that'll... Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that. My uh, headset decided to die. Um, so yeah, so once you get turn that uh, frame refresh on, then you can come and go in here and just adjust your uh, your noise to whatever you want. Um, just make sure you keep these numbers fairly low. Um, that way it's not going crazy or go crazy if you want. Um, then you can obviously go in here and change the pattern and all that kind of stuff just to get whatever you want. And then you can also go in and mix these. So if we want, we can drop this down a little bit. So now you can see it's starting to get some of that green back in here. We go add. So now you're getting multiple colors going. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool setup. Um, let me get this camera lined up again. 90, zero. Not sure why that's not working. 90, zero. There we go. I had it playing. Cool. So, and then since we are using these, the actual lights on here, we can go and go to Redshift, Objects, Environment, and it's going to get really blown out. Um, but let's go to our area light details. Just drop this volume contribution down really low. And then we can start having some environment fog in there. Six. And again, super, super fast. And then you can go and just animate how, how you want all these to, to be. You can rotate them, have them going up and down. All that good stuff. So yeah, it's a super, super cool setup. Um, just play around with it and change out shapes. You can use literally any shape. Um, just make sure you do the uh, the whole trick to get the light cage in there so you see you don't have just like floating lights unless you really want to. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys go ahead and take this tutorial or do this tutorial, um, and when you post it on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you post it, go ahead and tag me. I'd love to see, see what you guys create with this. Um, thanks for watching and yeah, have a good one.